All right, guys, so we're gonna do a little flow rate test flushing the Suzuki DF140. Um, your thermostat housing is there. This is the water exiting that. And I'm just, I'm on the flu, uh, the flush port right now. I know it's a little cockeyed, but it's mostly sealed. So, um, you know, I have decent water pressure here. Y'all can see that. Lots of water flowing through the, um, the water pickup area and um, you know that exhaust right there which is actually just coming from the um, the poppet valve area just dumps right down into there so the only other real way for the water to get out are just those little ports um, your your key stream stuff Okay, so I just wanted to verify this for y'all. Um, the water coming out of the red port, out of the midsection, is what feeds your cooling system for your, um, on the earlier models, the intake had a cooler on it, um, the VST's got a cooler on it, and the fuel rail has a cooler on it. Uh, also, the uh, crankcase has a cooler on it, and they all use this small black line um the output is coming straight across from where the hose is plugged in um so that water is not going into the block it's it it goes in through those items and then it comes out through the green and the blue uh, the blue is actually not the p tube i was holding it saying it was the green is uh just wanted to verify that One minute, we're gonna hold this under here. Sorry, just jump right into it and um, see how much water we get in either a minute or 30 seconds, how long it takes here. So this is the only water that's going through the uh, coolant passages of the engine because the all the rest of the water is going back out before it goes into the engine. So, we are going to see. We're at one minute 47. Conducting the test right here gave us 300 milliliters of water uh, in one minute. All right, so now we're gonna see how long does it take, or what's the flow rate with the engine running on the muffs of water circulating through. We obviously know that there's gonna be a period of time where it's the same before the thermostat opens, but I'm more so doing this to get um, to two things one, how long does it take for the thermostat to open? And two, what is the flow rate of water going through the engine with the engine running on muffs and the thermostat open? So we're gonna start it up here, right at the one minute mark on my video so I can keep track of this. Um, we've got the engine on muffs down there. Um, pretty good seal, everything's just kind of flowing off of it right now just because there's back pressure, but we're gonna go start it up. So the water flowing out of this black tube is probably just coming up from just from this yeah, and a little bit further from some of them down, but just keep watching this. So no water yet.
So here's the conclusion of my experiment with the, the Suzuki DF140, uh, the water flush rate. Uh, with the engine off, uh, so the thermostat is going to be closed with the engine off. Um, this is using the flush port. Uh, after, a, after a few seconds and uh, the water passages kind of pressurize a bit, you do get a small amount of pressurized water running through the thermostat, which is gonna be the only water that's actually running through your cooling passages and effectively transferring zero to 100% all the way through them. Now there's still gonna be just near at the bottom, possibly a little bit of exchange of the, the bottom water, um, but not anything to, to even really truly be measured uh, because it's all just sitting up there. So anyways, um, the the time, so for one minute of, of that flush port running, you get 300 milliliters of water through the actual thermostat. Um, so if you think uh, what's a gallon uh, for us USA, folks um that's 3785 milliliters so you think you want to flush for at least you know 15 minutes possibly you know 20 minutes is, is fine longer is fine too um but this is i think probably a good average of what we'd see uh liberally so you know that some people are only doing it for 15 minutes but at 20 minutes we have uh, we get 6,000 milliliters, which is like one and a half gallons of water um, in 20 minutes flush using the flush port that's actually passing through your cooling passages. Everything else is going back out and down through your poppet valve and just straight down through the exhaust. Um, and that's just, that. that's not, um, that water doesn't go into the cooling passages. It's just being relieved uh, before it even goes in. So, um, you know, in 20 minutes, if I'm spending 20 minutes flushing my motor, uh, let me refocus that. Um, if I'm spending 20 minutes flushing my motor, I, uh, or even if I just, if I'm straight out, if I'm flushing my motor, I, I definitely want to use more than one and a half gallons uh, of water to um, clear out the hours and hours of running this motor with the thermostat, you know, opening and closing. You're passing, you know, hundreds of gallons through this thing, I would think, because of the, the second video there showing that you know you can fill up a gallon in in you know less than a minute uh with with the water that's passing through your thermostat uh when your engine is running so as long as you're getting a good seal with your engine uh earmuffs that I, I don't recommend walking away from them because you can have them fall off uh the pressure will just push the muffs off to the side you know something like that but if you can just be around the back of your 
your engine there uh, with the muffs for for you know those 20 minutes uh, you know you're gonna pass you're gonna pass tw essentially almost you know over 20 times the amount of water through your engine um, and and not only that instead of just pushing the water to a closed point and letting it seep through little by little you're actually allowing pressurized water in in chunks of salt debris brush uh you know water water debris to to potentially pass all the way through your motor and out and so by by doing the flush without it you know you may still have a chunk of salt uh still kind of just pushed up against the top of your thermostat and never actually go through uh, I, I just I, I'm I'm baffled to hear this uh, because I've always been told flush port 20 minutes you're golden. Yeah, I see I see all these people. Um, you know I, I see some people having these corrosion issues and you know you for one you've got to change your anodes because your anodes are going to end up looking you know something like these where. There's just nothing left, um, and uh, that happens pretty quickly in salt water. So, if if you're you know using your motor in salt water and you don't want your motor to to look your actual engine block to look like this, you got to change the anodes. You know this obviously served its job. It did a great job at what it's supposed to do. So that's good. And I've got a whole bag of these, and you know a bunch I've thrown away from from uh, just servicing people's engines. So that's a really a recommendation there. And I, I'm gonna say now that if you have the ability to flush your engine on the muffs, I'm now recommending that every person does that. Now I know some boats stay in the water, uh, access is hard and you know, using the flush port, uh, we, I did prove that, you know, you do get some water through there uh, it's just not very much so um, you know on that on that account I will uh, probably sign out I don't have any other thoughts on this other than that if on my motors I'm gonna be using the, uh, the, the engine earmuffs like we all have done for you know some of us uh, 58 60 years <laughs> not me but um, I just thought that this was a, a cool little contest, uh, a, a test conducted and uh, I hope it can help y'all make your decision and keep your motor alive for uh, quite a long time. So thank you.